Hello YouTube RJ. Today's video we're going to dive into the features of your HF radio. Now there's a lot of new hams out there that HF is kind of a new thing too and there's a lot of hams that are out there that really never had an Elmer or a mentor work with them to teach them the little tricks to getting their HF radio station to work better. Today's video is for those people. Maybe you know all this, maybe it won't be a benefit to you, but I'm guessing you'll pick up something through this video. Make sure you stay to the end where I really get into the different settings involved in getting your digital noise reduction on your modern radios to work. Now I'll be using my FT710 Yezu today, but almost everything I show you will be related to other rigs the same way. You'll have the same features on those. You may have a few features you don't have, but you'll still learn about the features you do and how to use them to pull the weak signals out of the noise, how to get rid of the noise and not have to sit there and suffer through loud noise all night long while you're rag chewing on your radio. These are just little tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your HF rig. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Okay, we're over at the ham radio and I've got it set up where you can see my monitor here connected to my radio so that you can see the screen. Hopefully pretty clear. I want to go over a few basic concepts to help you working with HF on your HF radio. For those that are fairly new to HF or just haven't learned these little concepts of how to work to make listening more comfortable and to pull out weaker signals. You see we've got a big signal, 9 plus 45 at least. So this is 20 meters. I'm going to bring up the volume so you can hear it. Big signal. Now if these are the signals we're listening to, obviously we don't need the amp on. So let's talk about the amps a little. On Yezu, they like to call it IPO, Intercept Point Optimization. And what that is, that just means that your preamps are off. Most modern radios have multiple preamps preamps or at least one this means the preamps are off you're just picking up straight from the antenna it's coming into the, to the front end of the radio when this is uh, preamps aren't on you don't do any additional amplification to the signal coming in and you might ask yourself if you're new to hf why would you want to turn off amps why wouldn't you want all you the signal off the antenna you could get and the reason is because of noise if, if we were in a perfect world with no noise, obviously the more, more amplification you get, the stronger the signal you get. Then again, there's one other thing. Some signals are so strong, like this guy, you don't need an amplifier on him. You don't have any reason to amplify a signal going, you know, 20 over S9. But because of noise, and we do live in the world of electrical noise and RF noise, when you amplify a signal, you amplify the noise too. And the difference between the noise and the, and the signal is the signal to noise ratio, the ratio between them. And there's sometimes by amplifying both of them, you get more signal to noise ratio. You, you make it easier to discern the signal you want outside of the noise. And sometimes it works against you. It's the other way around. There are scenarios where you want your amps and where you don't. Let's move up to higher frequencies where we might be able to see this a little better. So let's go to 10 meters. My waterfall display here, there's settings for it. Obviously, you can make changes here, but we're not going to talk about those. What we're going to talk about is in your radio somewhere will be a setting called level or waterfall level or spectrum level that allows you to adjust how sensitive your, your unit is. As you go up, you'll show signals more and more displayed on your spectrum because it takes less and less signal before it decides to show it and the other way around. And so you want to adjust this to where you have a little bit of the noise grass, we call it, many of us. You want some of the noise just popping up. And the reason is that guarantees you're not, you're not too restrictive and you're not missing signals showing in your display. And so then that allows you to adjust to the point that you can see your signals. And so I can see that I've got something over here. Here's a signal. He's not too weak. I'm hearing him all right. I really would like to find a little weaker signal to demonstrate this with. This is kind of a weaker signal. They're in the fairly decent, but let's just show what happens. Let's bring on an amp when he's talking. Hey, can you 
Let's go to the next level. Notice that. Can you, can you hear how well I can hear him now? Okay. Notice my noise was amplified too. Look how much signal of noise, but look at the peaks here. What has happened is we've done this. And since he was just out of the noise, he's still just out of the noise, but we've actually created a situation where his ratio of the noise to him is better and makes it easier for me at hearing. So this is where you need your preamp for those weak signals. So this is where the preamps come in. Look how that noise disappeared. So that's the use of the preamps on weak signals in your higher frequencies. And I keep saying in the in the high frequencies, and the reason high frequency meaning lower band number, your your 10 meters, your 15 meters six meters the reason i keep saying that is because it becomes different as you move to your lower frequencies your your 40 meters especially your 80 meters the reason that it does is because when you get in those lower frequencies atmospheric noise becomes more predominant as the noise source and, and and is more predominant and more part of the signal and what you find is in most cases the amps on those lower frequencies amplify the noise more than they amplify the signal and so what happens is you get a worse signal to noise ratio. So we're battling a lot of noise on them bands in the evening. So that's what happens. Now, see, it's late afternoon. We're looking at the higher frequencies and, you know, the amps becoming beneficial. We're getting really weak signals. The propagation starting to go down. This is very helpful. But I want to show you what happens at night. And I can show you probably much better at night on the lower frequencies. And I can show you how to use some additional techniques. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a little magic trick and we're gonna jump to nighttime and over to 80 meters. Here we go. Okay, it's night now and we're on 80 meters. And we've got a signal here. Let's take a listen. 75, it doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, obviously something's uh, a little off there, that's for sure, but uh, hey. Well, it's pretty easy listening. You can, you know, they've got quite strong signals, as you can see. And uh, what I want to show you is I'm using a lot of techniques to make it sound comfortable. Let's, uh, let's go back and turn our gain all the way up. Let's drop the attenuation out of here. Let's, uh, let's kick our amp back on. Okay. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like now. Actually, see the uh, the ISS from the ground, or are you just watching it? I mean, how do you know? Could you actually see it? Well, no, not uh, not as far as seeing the station at nighttime, but you, know, you see the lights of the station, and uh, you know, you obviously way up there higher than an airplane and stuff, and now you see the lights. And uh, now pay attention when they drop. How much noise is that? Okay, well, let's turn digital noise reduction off and give you a real sample of it. I hear this. Now, watch what happens if I go in and turn the amp off. A little better. Okay. What happens if I hit a bunch of attenuation? And, and, and this is actual reception attenuation. A little better now, right? A little bit better now. But what can we do more? Well, let's roll our AF gain down. And use it not so much as a squelch, but as a pseudo squelch. I can roll away till he's gone. And you notice the needle moving up and down with it. But I can set the limit of what it takes with this to be received, okay? So now what happens is, as I've tuned that up, so um, 
my grandkids. The noise in the my, background, uh, grandson, much of it won't have enough six, signal so really to be pulled in the receiver because the game's been turned one. down. But these strong signals easily do it. Well, your problem is you just got so dang many trees. I know you've cut a lot down, but you, know, you pretty much do need to have a good, clear, uh, clear view of the sky there. And now that's almost like working an FM two meter. Um, not a, not a terrible lot of noise. You get a little static crash in there every so often. You do that you do that as it peaks over the level. But by attenuating the signal, we drop all the signals down, and that actually helps the signal to noise ratio of the receiver because we have strong signals to work with. So it's a little bit different than working with a weak signal. But as you saw, we don't want the amplifiers, the preamps to turn on. See, look, this is how much more of the noise it pulls into it. While they're talking, you hear more noise. Go to IPO, which is both preamps off. And listen to how much quiet, quieter that signal is, how much less noise we have in his signal and I realize that uh, you know my mic might not be the best thing equipment to pick up this audio but uh, I think you could probably hear the differences so so that's where our attenuation so let's go back and talk a little about this our attenuation went off allows the full signal to come in from the antenna into the front end of the receiver and then you have different levels of attenuation we can slowly go up in attenuation levels. Some rigs have uh, knobs that are completely variable. Some are like this rig where you have steps of attenuation you can turn in. And so often what you'll find, oh, click the meter instead, that the most attenuation you can use usually on the lower frequencies um, that you can use without diminishing your signal the better off you'll be as far as noise. When you got weaker signals, just remember to back off of this if you start working a weaker signal. And then, then slowly move up to figure out what level of attenuation is going to work for that signal. You know, what level will give you and continue to give you enough signal from the station you're wanting to listen to while getting rid of everything else. That's where your attenuator helps you. You know, you might want to try amps from time to time on a weaker signal up here, but you'll find most of the time you're going to do better if you don't have your preamps. That's IPO on the Yaesu 710 and DX10 and some of the other ones. Other rigs are going to call it different things. They're going to say preamp one on, preamp one off. So just try your amps, but, but this is typically what you're going to find. I'm typically in here in 80 meters at night. I'm typically running 18 dB unless I've got a weak station I'm working that's uh, hollered out and we're trying to work with. My amps are going to be off. Digital reduction is going to be on. I wasn't even using digital reduction because I wanted you to see the difference. So let's go back and get back to some stations. And then I'll show you. We'll use these techniques I just showed you. And then we'll also use digital noise reduction. Okay, so we've got some guys here talking. Your man four, sir, do you see Owens? What's he running? Turn it off, turn off the attenuation, roll of RF gain all the way. And let's see what the uh, digital noise reduction is going to do for us. See how much that cleared that up? Listen that. Now that we've done that, now let's apply our techniques we've looked at. Let's roll our RF gain down. I've turned on the attenuation. Let's see what the sound like.
Okay, so I think I've covered the things I wanted to cover. Give you a good feel for attenuation. Give you a good feel for your preamps. Give you a good feel for using your RF gain to roll back. And, you know, we looked at visual noise reduction. And, of course, visual re noise reduction has different levels, or in this case, it's actually algorithms. And you can really help with that. Let me roll. CLH sounds like mm. uh, JP a little bit. Turn it where we can hear the noise. Uh, and by All right, here's the microphone. CLH, uh, KE4, and All right, we got everything kicked back off, and we got a lot of noise. There's no digital noise reduction. There's digital that noise reduction. That helps. That's that's the first algorithm. Notice it. Starting it. Noise. No, notice the noise. Getting less and less. I'll bleep some of that. I'm sorry. Now, now notice that we're to a point where the noise is really gone. But notice the audio has a little distortion. As we go up in these algorithms and get more aggressive, you'll notice the noise getting less and less, but you're going to start noticing distortion in the audio. And I'm going to take it extreme and really show you. Even the static crashes are back way off now. You can see them. But see, they sound like they're underwater somewhere. We're over digitally processing the signal. But hey, we get rid of that noise. So why would we have a why would we have algorithms in our digital noise reduction that would distort the audio like that? It seems like you wouldn't want that. But the truth is, let's say you have that very rare DX expedition that they haven't been there for 20 years, and you really want to get it in your logs. Do you care if the people you're talking to sound like they're underwater a little bit, as long as you can understand them? If you had so much noise, you weren't able to work the station, but you could turn that up and make it station you're working on the DX in sound a little underwater have a little bit of distortion but you can understand them but you get enough noise knocked down you can make them out and you can make that contact wouldn't you want that option this isn't for rag chewing on 80 meters at night this is for when you really want that signal bad and you'll put up with a little distortion in the audio we all heard of a DX audio that's audio that's not kind of harsh not really well it's when you set your station up to have that real peaky voice to get through on DX we, we sacrifice the quality of the audio to penetrate noise. That's what this is doing the other way around. It's sacrificing the quality of the audio of who you're listening to to get that signal through where you can understand them. So that's where you would use these really high digital noise reduction levels or algorithms. So, you know, but you wouldn't want to leave them all, all the time. I, I find them just, for example, in my station, I, I run five, algorithm five all the time. Unless I run into something I just can't make out and I want some more help and I turn it up. Five, I find, is a nice balance where it doesn't distort the audio, but it does clean up the audio some. I find it to be a friendly, friendly setting. So I hope you learned something from this. I hope this was helpful to you in some way. Um, as I said, it was targeting the people who are new to the HF and maybe these little tricks and techniques and stuff uh, might come to you down the line and this could be a help to shortcut you and get you to... Uh, Learn to play with your radio a little bit more as far as getting those signals and not only just getting the signals you want, but getting them comfortably where you're not sitting there dealing with large static all, all night long listening to people. They come in very, very handy when you're DXing. They also come in very, very handy at night when you're doing your rag chew session on 80 meters. So, again, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you in the next video if you like what I'm uh, putting out there.
please subscribe. Hit the little notify bell if you want to be reminded when I put new content out. See you in the next video.